Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a practical demonstration of some TRAS and TRC uh, timing behavior that is implied by the videos explaining how TRAS and T TRC work uh, that I did like the DDR4 timings explained, and funnily enough, a lot of people decided to skip over those two videos, which was stupid of them, because they didn't, like, th like, I wouldn't be making this video if people didn't, like, not understand how TRAS and TR TRC work. Like, ma like, why? Why do I just, I make the information available, and then you just refuse to, like, absorb it into your brain. And understand it. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to be demonstrating some wacky, some, like, it's not even wacky, because the problem is, if you understand how the freaking timings work, it makes sense that this is possible to do. Oddly enough, it doesn't work on Intel CPUs, because Intel CPUs are wacky. But on AMD CPUs, this is exactly what is supposed to happen if you do what I've done here. So, the setup is... A Gigabyte X570 TSA Aorus Master, we've got 232 gig uh, Crucial Ballistics RGB DIMMs in there. I am very sorry about the strobing RGB. I didn't realize it would be that when I pulled them out of my uh, memory collection, because I haven't run these DIMMs in uh, a very long time. Anyway, they're 16 uh, gigabit Micron Rev B, they are dual rank, and currently they're overclocked to 3800CL16. We're not really concerned about the stability, we're just looking at some weird stuff that you can do to TRAS and, and TRC, depend if you configure your other timings in specific ways. Uh, anyway, the CPU is a Ryzen 9 5950X. So, let's take a look at the wacky behavior, or more like expected behavior that looks wacky if you don't understand how TRAS or TRC work. So here's the wacky behavior, right? So we've got TCL16, TRCDWR27, TRCDRD27, TRP27, TRAS21, TRC31. How is, how, how is the system stable? These are micron memory chips. Micron memory chips do not do low TRC. TRC31, like that is impossible for a micron memory chip to run. How, how am I doing this? Well, it's very simple. Okay? And the same goes for TRAS, like, you know, if you're on an Intel system, you can't run TRAS21 on Micron. Th that's impossible. Why am I able to do this? It's very simple. TRAS controls the minimum amount of clock cycles between an activate command and a precharge command. That's all it does. So, if my activate command has a 27 cycle delay after it before we can send a read operation, we very well can't send a pre-charge, right? Like, now, I suspect Intel memory controllers do actually potentially send an activate and then immediately send a pre-charge sometimes, which would explain why on memory Intel memory controllers you can't do this, but on AMD memory controllers, you send an activate command, and then you send a read or a write command. And then after you've sent your read or write command, you have to wait for either RTP or TWR before you can send a pre-charge command. In this scenario, TRCD is 27. Our T RTP is 12. The minimum amount of time between in a, uh, you know, re like activate read pre-charge sequence, or the minimum number of clock cycles in our activate read pre-charge sequence in this scenario is 39 cycles. So a TRAS of 21, literally never does anything. Like, the, the memory controller, the only time the memory controller considers the TRAS timing is if, for any other reason, other timings haven't completely blown past it. Okay? That's, that's why you can have TRAS 21. It's also the main reason why, if you're on an AMD CPU, in my opinion, fiddling with your TRAS is a waste of your time. You should just set it to 21 and worry about your TRC timing instead. Because TRC is actually important to performance, and TRAS is just a waste of time, because ultimately the only, re like, the only reason you want to lower TRAS is so that you can lower your TRC. Like, I don't even know why this register exists. So anyway. <laughs> so that's how that works, okay? So we can't... Uh, cause a, like, TRAS issue because it is literally impossible for the memory control, like, the memory controller will simply not try to send a pre-charge command before sending a read command. Now, theoretically, you could have a memory controller that for some ungodly reason goes from an activate immediately into a pre-charge. I have no idea why you'd ever want to do that, but I strongly suspect that Intel memory controllers do exactly that, because if you try to do this demonstration on an Intel CPU, it does not work. Anyway, TRC 
controls the minimum amount of time between two activate commands to the same bank. Okay? Two activate commands to the same bank. Now, before you can send another activate command to the same bank, you have to send a precharge command. Which means that our activate read precharge sequence takes, in this scenario, 27, uh, well, trcdrd27 plus 12 plus 27, which is a total of 66 clock cycles. Therefore, a TRC of 31 doesn't cause any stability issues because the CPU never tries to send an activate, like two activate commands that quickly. Okay? And if you watch the videos explaining how DDR4 timings work, you would understand this. Or at least I would assume that you have enough brain cells to put the obvious math together to understand this, but I do make YouTube videos, so I don't know why I expect any intelligence here. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so this doesn't cause any stability issues because with the other timings that we have here, it is impossible for an activate command, and actually for a write, well, the funny thing about write commands is that like TWR is shorter than RTP, but TWR starts after a write burst finishes, and a write burst on DDR4 is at max, like minimum length is two clock cycles, at maximum length is four clock cycles, which means that effectively our TWR is basically the same as our TRTP right now, because the shortest write burst you could possibly have is two cycles. So that means uh, oh, also that write burst starts after cast write latency, so there's a 16 cycle delay, actually wait, cast write latency, yeah, no, in this scenario we have a 16 cycle delay before we get a 2 cycle delay into our uh, pre-charge delay into, you know, the actual 27 cycle long pre-charge command, and I'm, admittedly I haven't made a video explaining how write, time, uh, how write timings work, so, you know, fair enough if you... you don't understand this part, but the read side of this operation should be blatantly obvious at this point. Anyway, um, so yeah, so you can do something like this, and now I'm just going to quickly demonstrate to you uh, how we can break this on purpose. So we're not going to bother going into Windows anymore. The only reason I went into Windows is to demonstrate that those timings are actually there, because, you know, if you're looking at the memory timings in the BIOS, uh, they might not really... Uh, really be doing anything. Man, I love my capture card. I really do. Why does it do this? <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, if we want to cause a crash right now, the easiest way to do that would be to set... Okay, so first of all, I'm going to demonstrate that like I'm not punching in completely absurd TRCD RTP timings. Uh, so we're going to do that by punching in like, I don't know, 44, uh, 80, right? Like, those are nice, safe timings, and we're just going to demonstrate that everything still boots right up. Um, okay, cool. So everything fires right up. However, now, if I try to set, uh, well, right now TRAS is still at 41, so we're going to drop TRAS to 21, because we're going to crash TRC first. TRC is the easy one to do. Also, I don't know why TRAS exists. Um, <laughs> like, I understand why TRAS exists on Intel CPUs, because they don't have a TRC register. But on AMD CPUs, you have a TRC register, which just, like, does like, the what, just, yeah, anyway, some, like, well, whatever. So anyway, here we have TRC, and so right now, if I wanted to crash this, we have 20, 20, 40. So we have 40, so something like 60 should still work, but, um, if I punch in, like, 50, it shouldn't work anymore. Actually, you know what? We'll we'll just go for it, and I'll just punch in 31 again. And we should immediately just not be able to post, right? So previously, like right at the start of the video, I had 31 all the way in Windows. I punch in 31 now. What? It's not supposed to ha- oh. There. It doesn't post anymore. Because now it is actually possible for the memory controller to send two activate commands too close together, right? 
TRC prevents you from sending two activate commands too quickly. Um, so it is actually a useful timing because you don't actually want an absurdly loose TRCD just so you can, you know, not violate your activate timing. And you don't want an absurdly loose pre-charge just so that you don't activate your activate timing. Because in a lot of scenarios, your command sequence might look like activate, read, 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 pre-charge. Right? In that scenario, we want the pre-charge command to be as short as possible. We don't want to have a super ridiculously long pre-charge. Where the TRC timing is for is preventing you from doing a activate read pre-charge activate too quickly, right? That activate read pre-charge. If there's just a single read command, that read command is 20 cycles after the activate command because of TRC DRD. Um, and then you immediately go into, you know, and then 10 cycles later because, well, actually we're on RTP 12 right now. So 12 cycles later, you hit your pre-charge command. So that's 20 plus 12 plus 20. That works out to 52. And uh, Micron memory sticks cannot tolerate two activate commands within 52 clock cycles of each other. Um, so it would crash, like, so it crashes, as you can see right now. Um, do we have a reset button? I was really hoping to get an F9 code, but like this board is on one of the newer AGSAs and the newer AGSAs don't spit out F9 codes. Okay, we've got a different one. <laughs> Yeah, so now we aren't able to post because the TRC timing is too low and we like our other timings aren't preventing the scenario that TRC is governing from happening. Um, right? So, yeah. And the same is true for TRAS. Like, th this exact same thing can be done, well, actually on, right? Like, alternate, like, actually, yeah, the way I'm going to fix this... I'm just going to clear CMOS at this point. Oh, right, this motherboard doesn't tolerate that. Man. The worst part of AMD motherboards is the AMD portion of the firmware, by which I refer, like, that means the AGSA. It's terrible. I've just realized that this quick demonstration is now 12 minutes long and mostly me complaining about my audience being idiots but it's true like I can't help it like people keep asking me for a series of videos explaining how timings work and then they don't watch them or if they did watch them they didn't understand them anyway so like what am I supposed to do <laughs> anyway so an alternative way that we can fix our current boot up instability with the absurdly low TRC uh, is uh, we're gonna do so again, we're going to go to 20, 20, 20. I'm just going to demonstrate that that still boots, though it won't boot if we have 21 and 31 for our TRAS and TRC. So one way we can fix this is we can punch in 44. I should probably lay off the energy drinks right before recording. Anyway, so that boots right up, because now TRC is being prevented from actually doing anything by our TRAS timing, right? Because TRAS controls the minimum delay between an activate command and a pre-charge command. So what's happening right now is we send an activate, and then we send a read, which is TRCD, uh, which is TRCDRD, and then we send a uh, pre-charge command 24 cycles later. Yeah. So we are no longer, you know, if our TRAS was at 21, then the limiting factor for pre-charge would be 12, the RT, RT, RTP timing over here. But since our TRAS is 44, and TRCD, like TRCD plus uh, TRTP right now is uh, 32, 32 is less than 44. And therefore TRAS delays the pre-charge command by 12 more cycles, so that it satisfies the 44 cycle uh, pre-charge, like act to pre-charge timing. And since our pre-charge is delayed to cycle number 44 and takes 20 cycles to complete, we can't send another activate command for the next, like, un, for, like starting at the first activate command, we can't send the second activate command for the next 64 cycles, right? Because we go activate, TRCD read, uh, RT, uh, in this case, actually, we go TRAS, uh, pre-charge, 
um, which then is TRP activate, right? So we go 20 plus 24 because TRAS plus 20 again, which is 64. Yeah. And so our TRC of 31, which is impossibly low, isn't causing any stability issues right now. But if we go to 64 and then we punch in 21, this is fine. This is also okay. Right? So, yeah. Anyway, um, I think that's it for the video. But, like, this is, this is why, like, because I, I see so, like, on, admittedly, this doesn't work on Intel CPUs. And I think the reason it doesn't work on Intel CPUs is partially because Intel CPUs don't have a TRC register, partially because I somewhat su suspect that Intel has, like, some kind of speculative row opening thing going on, because uh, I've done some testing on this, and you can actually, you get performance improvements uh, on Intel CPUs by lowering TRAS down to, like, like, even with values of TRAS that are less than TRCD, which in fear, like, which is theoretically impossible. However, if the memory controller was doing something like it sends an activate command and then realizes, actually, I don't want to activate that, and then immediately tries to send a pre-charge, that would explain why uh, Intel CPUs don't tolerate, like, like, won't allow you to do something like this, whereas AMD CPUs do. Um, but, yeah. Either way, um, if you see anybody talking about some magic equation for calculating TRAS, they don't know how TRAS works. They just don't, because there's no magic equation for calculating TRAS. TRAS governs a very specific timing situation. It governs the delay between an activate command and a precharge command. If that precharge command is later for any reason, TRAS doesn't matter at all. It does nothing. Except on Intel CPUs, because Intel CPUs are weird. Um, and then TRC is kind of the same thing. So, yeah. I I'm glad that at least AMD impl implements a memory controller that behaves according to how, like, the timings are supposed to behave instead of the freaking Intel memory controller where, like, the, the thing is, I tested it on DDR5, and even, like, with a TRCD of 40, a TRAS of 28 has more performance than a TRAS of, like, 50 which makes zero sense. It shouldn't work like that, but yet it does. Luckily on AMD CPUs, the CPU doesn't do anything weird, so yeah. Anyway, uh, and even then on like the Intel CPUs, it just means you have to manually tune your TRAS timing instead of just doing the thing you can do on AMD where you just punch 21 in and don't worry about it anymore. You do still need to manually tune your TRC. I mean, alternatively, you could set your TRC to 31 or something, which I think is the register limit. Oh, no, you can set it all the way down to 29. How fun. Um, and so you could have a TRC of, like, 29, 44, and that's just fine. Um, so you, basically with AMD, you can pick and choose. You can either choose to tune TRAS or you can choose to tune TRC. You don't have to use b both of them, which is why I keep saying I don't know why they both exist. <laughs> Like, you could just have one of them, and it would do, do like, one of them would handle both easily. Um, yeah, anyway, there, that's it for the video. Um, that ended up being way longer than it really needed to be, but hopefully, I've managed to, dr like, drill this into people's heads at this point. Because, yeah, like, I, I keep seeing people just not understand how TRAS works. Admittedly, it doesn't work like this on Intel CPUs because Intel CPUs are whack, but, um, yeah. Like, this is how it's supposed to work. I don't know what the hell Intel CPUs are doing. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I also have a band camp. There's links to all of that down in the description. They, and if you'd like to support the channel, uh, it would be much appreciated. Um, so yeah, the, there's links for that down in the description. So anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.